Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 12.1, part two, uh, entitled Combining Things Thermodynamically. What we're going to talk about today is, what if you take two objects that are at different temperatures and put them together? Is there a way to predict what temperature they arrive at? And we call that equilibrium. What temperature they equalize at? And there absolutely is. I thought I'd show you a few really interesting videos first of all um, the first one I want to show you it deals with convection it has nothing to do with combining things thermodynamically I just thought you'd get a kick out of this uh, this guy makes what's called an infinity airplane how to make an airplane fly forever and it's uh, it uses convection I found it um, a few years ago and thought you might get a kick out of this basically you make a paper airplane you have to make it so it turns to the left. But what you do is you do it over top of a stove. And what's going on is there's a thermal updraft. Convection is going up, which is powering this airplane. It will fly forever as long as that stove's on. And you can't tell the stove's on, but there's hot air rising, and it's riding on those updrafts, kind of like a large birds that soar, like eagles. Um, condors, vultures, they all take advantage of the same thing. The sun warms the earth, which creates an updraft that you can't see. Hang gliders work on this property. Uh, here's a guy. He's going to combine a red-hot nickel ball in with water. So he takes his blowtorch, and he's going to put it right in water. And the sound it makes is crazy. Weird. Why does it do that? Something called the Leiden frost effect. We'll see it later on in the chapter. Here's that same red hot nickel ball. He's going to put it on a block of ice. Again, we're going to combine things thermodynamically something hot with something cold. Interesting. Uh, and the last little video I have for you is the, a thermal tile from a, the space date, from anything like a, it's from the space shuttle, but anything that comes back into our atmosphere that we want to survive, we put a special thermal tile on that those leading edges to dissipate heat. They're really good at get, getting rid of heat, and I'll show you here. On, but what we do have is we have a raw nine-pound material that we use. Now, these have been in here at 2,200 degrees per hour. So you'll see they're blazing, blazing hot. Now, most things, if you put in an oven, like if you put a, a frozen pizza in... 2,200 degrees. After a couple minutes. 2,200 degrees. Hour, I, don't, I can't even fathom metal, that. It may, if, it, if the metal did not melt, at least it would conduct the heat and keep the heat for so long that you couldn't get near it, well, you know, within hours. Well, look at that. Unbelievable. You can take this off. It's, just, it's so it's good at getting rid of that heat. heat. So that you can touch it that you can seconds after being, like, 2,200 degrees, and the corners have already well, they were, cooled they were down. They the oven at 2,200 degrees. Wow. So you can go ahead. I, you can pick them up and take a picture. Just make sure you don't pick it up on the edges, just at the, at the corners. Unbelievable. Just at the corners. I mean, you, I, mean I just don't want to get anybody... Uh, uh, so let's talk a little bit more specifically about it. Combining things thermodynamically. There's, first of all, we call it calorimetry. Calorimetry is when we use what's called um, specific heats. Every um, object, it it's, has an ability to absorb heat. Some things absorb heat easier than others, and we call that specific heat. Um, they use the principle of conservation of energy, meaning this, that the, the universe has a certain amount of energy. And you've heard the statement that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So what's happening is when you take that red hot ball, it's got a certain amount of energy. And as it cools down, it loses that energy. But that energy just doesn't disappear from the universe. Something has to gain it. And it turns out it's probably the air around it and the, the ice 
around it is gaining energy. It's warming up. So something gets colder, all the while something else has to be getting hotter. So this whole idea of combining things thermodynamically is based on that principle that if something loses energy, something else has to be gaining energy. So right here, the energy of one thing plus the energy of the other thing equals constant. Actually, it equals, uh, if you go like this, if you say that the change in energy of one thing plus the change of energy in another thing, so something gets hotter, something else gets colder, that change in energy is going to be zero. And that's how we're going to do problems like this. Here's our first example. A calorimeter contains half a kilogram of water at 15 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty cold water. And you're taking a really small block of zinc that's really hot and you're putting it in the water. What is the final temperature of the system? So here we go. Uh, we're going to say this, that the thing that gains heat plus the thing that loses heat is going to be equal to zero. And what I like to do, I like to move this thing over here. So then I have on one side the thing that's gaining heat, and on the other side I have a negative thing that's losing heat. I'm changing colors just so you can kind of see red. Red for hot, blue for cold. The thing that's gaining heat, what's getting warmer in this case? It's the water. The thing that's losing heat, what's, lose, what's losing heat? It's the zinc. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to say MC delta T for the water is going to equal the negative MC delta T for the zinc. And we just fill in everything we know and we're going to solve for the final temperature. So the mass of the water is 0 0.50 kilograms. The specific heat of water, you're going to go over to this chart over here. Water has a specific heat of 4180. The change in temperature, it's always the final temperature, which we don't know what it is, minus the initial temperature. And the initial temperature of water is 15 degrees Celsius from the problem. Now, negative, remember the negative, 0 0.040. The specific heat of zinc is 388. And then the final temperature, we don't know what it is, minus the initial temperature, which is 115. Now notice, I can get away with giving these the same variable because they end up at the same temperature. The temperature of the zinc is going to fall, the temperature of the water is going to rise, and they're going to end up at one temperature, the final temperature. Now this is just a big algebra problem. I'm going to multiply these things together and then distribute it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, multiply it together, and then distribute it. So I'm going to pull out my calculator and I'm going to take uh, 0 0.5 0 0.5 times 4180 times 15. Well, let's do this here first. 0 0.5 times 4180. That comes out to be 2090. So 2090 minus, and I'm going to take 2090 times 15, it comes out to 31350. Now I can't forget my TF here, my, my temperature final, when I, I, mean I lost my variable. Okay, and I'm going to take negative uh, 0.040 times 388. That's going to give me negative 15.5 TF. Then it's going to be a plus because a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So I multiply that by 115. I end up with 1785. Now I'm going to take everything that has the TF in it and put it on this side. So I'm going to move this over here, and I'll move this over here. 
So I end up with uh, 2, 0, no, 2, 1, 0, 5, TF equals, well, 31, 350 plus 1785. 31, 350 plus 1785. Comes out to 33,135. So now I can figure my final temperature. 31, 33, 135 divided by um, 2105. Right, 2105. It comes out to 15.7. 16 degrees Celsius. Oh my gosh. Does that even make sense? Let's think about this. Is it, does it make sense that water would only go up one degree? And the answer is yes. Uh, it's yes because two reasons. Reason number one, it's like 10 times harder to heat and cool water than it is zinc. Thing number two, I've got literally 10 times as much. I've only got uh, 0.040 and I've got like 0.5. So it's like more than 10 times the amount and it's more than 10 times harder. So it's probably going to be somewhere like 100 times closer to the temperature of water, which 16 absolutely is very close to the temperature of water. So when you combine things, this is the way we start. Every single time that you do a problem where you're combining things thermodynamically, something is going to lose heat, something is going to gain heat, whatever is gained is what's lost, set them equal to, don't forget this negative. Watch out, Harry Potter. This negative will get you every time. Oh, and I have one more video to show you before we leave. I thought it was very funny. Of course, it happens over in Russia. They always do all the crazy things. It's kind of a preview of what we're going to do next, and it's um, the cha changes of state. So I just want you to watch this. It's a CD he's got there. Еще. <laughs> <laughs>